It feels good to be back on a one of a kind special presentation here on Star Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Suren Sundaram. It's a Monday and you know what that means we are back on the Star Sports press room. It's the first time that the members of the media from digital, from print and from television have the opportunity to engage with the legends of the game. Our incredible star cast, the fans are clearly lapping it up, but here are our members of the media who now get the opportunity to ask all those burning questions when it comes to the Tata IPL. So, members of uh, the media, my friends, it's good to have you once again and now Let's reveal who we have on this edition of the Star Sports Press Room. She's been a former India captain, one of the greatest from 20 no 2005 to 2022, almost 18 seasons. She's got 10,868 international runs. 7,805 of those came in ODIs. We have the one and only Mithali Raj. Mithali, it's good to have you. Thank you. And then. I mean the introduction for this gentleman he was the player of the match in the 2017 20 world cup where india defeated pakistan in south africa he's the swing king he is irfan pathan irfan bhai good to have you too thank you so much uh so rivalry week just culminated and according to bark which is a tool to measure viewership this is unbelievable we have recorded the highest viewership reach when it comes to the first 18 matches on the disney star network of the tata ipl 40 crore viewers wow. turned up to watch it and i think our members of the media also would probably register that number 40 crores rivalry week just culminated how was <laughs> i've given you the numbers how has it been for you just getting it all out there for the fans and for everyone else i'm i'm still recovering <laughs> it has been an outstanding week uh, look Yes, we're going to talk about uh, Mumbai and CSK rivalry and Mahendra Singh Dhoni's, you know, those uh, 20 important runs of Rohit Sharma's century. But, you know, the most underrated rivalry has been, you know, for me, is between Rajasthan Royals and Punjab Kings. Right. We have seen so many games. E- even now, even the yeah. game which was not even scored of one, 150 runs, it still went down to the wire. So, that's the kind of rivalry we saw and it, it, it lived up to it. And at the same time, icing on the cake was Mumbai CSK game. I was there at the ground yesterday and it was so amazing to see the Mumbai fans were actually divided with Mahendra Singh Dhoni Dhoni. being there. For the first uh, time I saw Vankade in blue and yellow, both. Yes. Wow. Vitali, here's a number for you. 12,380 crore minutes. have been spent by viewers to view the first 18 matches mind you just the first 18 matches of the tata ipl which is a 15% yeah. growth compared to 2023 happens to be your second season of uh, ipl on star how has the journey been for you seeing this growth year on year i think uh, when we started ipl the craze and then now from where it started to now i think we've definitely seen a lot of growth there have been uh, potential talented players coming through the ranks and me as a broadcaster i think into the second season i'm thoroughly enjoying it right. very exciting games to call yeah all right so i think i'm done with my questions but what are we here for well we are here for our friends here so from pti if you could just please take your name and uh, also let us know who the question is for Hi, Himang Neji. This side from Press Trust of India. My question is for Hi, Irfan Paji. Hi. Uh, so Hi. no Butler, no Ashwin, no problems. Say yeah. Rajasthan Royals. So what are your views <laughs> about the What are your views about the squad depth and uh, the balance that this RR team has shown? And is it finally the year we can say that Rajasthan Royals will be back on the pinnacle of the IPL, or will they fumble again like they have been in the previous seasons? uh hevang it's a very good question uh first of all you know i think rajasthan royals uh auction was really good you know when the auction started right. they wanted to go behind power they went there in the first half an hour and their you know auction was done and dusted there right. what they wanted there uh, they wanted someone to actually play alongside hetmeyer or if not replace hetmeyer if something goes wrong as far as the injury or form is concerned so they were pretty pretty much on target as far as you know the auction strategy is concerned at the same time when they have two spinners uh, they have top quality uh, batters on the top in Josh Butler uh, and at the same time nice backup with great bowling lineup yeah. as well uh, they certainly looking really really good and i really think that if this is not the year for Rajasthan Royals they will be very very disappointed because they're playing really well they've been led by Sanju Samson really well as well and they have good replacement players sitting in dugout and lot many teams like if you take an example of rcb 
RCB is struggling to get proper replacement players and they are not able to perform as well. So, uh, with Rajasthan uh, Royals, everything is going really well and I hope it continues for them. Yeah, I think one strange fact is that in all these years of the IPL, I have not seen a team drop just one game almost after three, three and a half weeks hmm. of the tournament and Rajasthan have done that. Yeah. Right, our next question, ma'am, you're in the firing line. Niharika <laughs> from IANS. The question, I believe, is for Mithali. Please, go on. Everyone, uh, my question is for Mithali, ma'am. Like this season's average run rate has been at a soaring high. So, just want to know that what are the reasons she thinks is behind IPL 2024 regarding uh, scoring really high? Like, is it the impact player rule enabling teams to go from the word go in terms of batting first or even in the chases as well? Uh, I'm also glad that she asked a batter and not the all-rounder <laughs> he knows the pain of being a bowler in this also. Yes. Well, uh, Niharika, I think um, the impact player rule has definitely worked because uh, it does uh, support when you know you can always swap it with the bowler in the second innings and we've seen how it has really helped uh, teams to post big total and also chase, especially more so while chasing it has helped. And uh, this season we've seen they've also utilised it when the batting department has not come good. And they've so they've had impact player even then, but it has not really come off well. So, um, I think when, when the teams are chasing, it definitely has yep. added a lot. Where does that leave the all-rounders at See, that's the only thing which I think this rule uh, in the long term maybe not that great for Indian cricket. But because if you see Venkatesh Ayer, yeah. he's not bowling. Shivam Dubey, not bowling. He's not bowling. Uh, you know, and you know there are other all rounders as well who can actually bowl. They are the batter mainly. They're not not able to play as a play in the playing eleven. Guys like Surya Kumar Yadav, we're not able to see him in the field regularly. You know, youngsters like Shriman Gill was an, was an impact player last yeah. year and obviously now he's doing, he's leading the side. So, you want the youngsters to be part of the game because, you know, in the future, even if they are just batters, they, they will learn so many things by being on the field and, you know, the leadership quality will go up. But at the same time, I'm really worried about all-rounders and eventually going forward, we'll have to think about this aspect as well. Yes, impact rule is benefiting the entertainment part of cricket, which is, you know, high scoring games. And Metali rightly actually mentioned, and obviously he's wearing the captain's yeah. hat all the time, right. which is outstanding. But Indian cricket will have to think about going forward about the impact rule as far as the all-rounders are concerned. Just staying on the topic of all-rounders, I think it's just going to get tough for you because you have to answer the next question, which happens to be on the same topic. Uh, Amit Kumar from the Times of India, sir, please shoot away. Hi, Irfan Bhai. Uh, my question is Hi. to you. Uh, yeah, Dinesh Karthik has been phenomenal in death overs in this IPL. Uh, do you think he can be a surprise pick for the uh, T20 World Cup? Uh, look, right now he's been in great form, Amit. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Indian cricket has tried uh, Dinesh, Kumar, uh, Dinesh Karthik before uh, and it didn't work for them. So I think they have a right guy at the moment who's in form, which is Rishabh Pan, as far as the wicket keeping is concerned, as far as the middle lower order is concerned. Um, if I have my pick, I think selectors will be on the same page as well. They want to take someone like Rishabh Pant uh, ra rather than, uh, you know, uh, thinking about uh, Dinesh Karthik. He had his fair fair uh, share of chances when it comes to playing for India. And, uh, unfortunately, in the last T20 World Cup, uh, he didn't do that great whenever he got the opportunity. So, I personally think Rishabh Pant is the guy you should actually uh, take in that place. All right, shooting one question at both of you. Uh, from the past, we have learned that uh, usually the selectors choose two wicket keepers. One mm. is a reserve wicket keeper. We also are going to look at a reserve opener. Considering what form you have seen mm. in the Tata IPL, mm. who are your two front runners? Who are you thinking should be on that plane to the US and the Caribbean? As far as the wicket keeping is concerned? Yeah. Uh, well, look, first, Rishabh Pant, no doubt. You know, after the injury, I thought it would have been very tough for yeah. him. Especially, you know, big layoff, coming back, wicket keeping, leading the side, batting, batting in a difficult situation. but. Boy, he has done so well and really happy for him, really happy for Indian cricket as well because he's, an, he's a match winner himself and his white ball cricket has actually gone better. His test cricket was always up there but now his white ball cricket since, you know, before he, even he got injured, uh, it was quite amazing. The second wicketkeeper wicket slot is going to give a lot of headache to selectors because Sanju Samson is in tremendous form but 
he's batting up the order. Yeah. So do you want that? Yeah. Do you want the wicket keeper who's batting up the order? Or do you want the wicket keeper who's actually batting down the order? Like a finisher so, role. Yeah, Ishan Kishan is in a good form. Sanju Samson is in a good form. But there is a traffic jam. There is a traffic jam. Y- Yashasvi has actually done really well before the IPL started for for India. So you won't. Hope that he'll do really well in the you know upcoming matches and he will be, he will be there. But Rohit Sharma is there. You know he's been in a brilliant form. Uh, Virat uh, Kohli is there. And then at the same time, uh, you you always want to think about Shubman Gill as well. So there is literally a traffic jam on top. So you want ideally a wicket keeper who can bat lower down the order. Who are those wicket keepers? KL Rahul is not batting down the order. If he bats down the order, I don't think he's a bad uh, pick. Then you have uh, Jitesh Sharma as well. So. I personally think if I'm if I'm a selector, I would want two wicket keepers who can actually bat in the middle or lower order. And the headache is only going to get bigger for the selectors because we just saw what happened in rivalry week. But 15th of April onwards is the start of the fan week. If this game is all love, then you, the fans, are the real heartbeat. And Star Sports is going to celebrate this Ajab fandom the upcoming week, and we will highlight how every fan. brings that something extra when it comes to their favorite team and the way they showcase it Mithali you see in a lot of fans you have been in Hyderabad the Sunrise Hyderabad team is also doing well but the one thing and this 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 is the most wonderfully surprising thing weekday weekend doesn't <laughs> matter all stadiums are full and yeah. everybody is tuning in to IPL on Star I think it's one of those time of the year that everybody would want to be part of Uh, going to the stadium, get, taking the children around, and uh, giving them a glimpse of what IPL matches are all about. Okay, and Irfan Pathan, we have Irfan's uh, date diary, 8th <laughs> April. You went for the CSK KKR game, oh. and that, yeah, I mean, please, I don't want to ask you the question. Please just describe how it was right from the moment you landed at the airport to the to the time when the game got over. It's unbelievable. I never seen a fan following like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, of, of the of the team. and of a uh, one person mahendra singh dhoni never seen anything like that in my life and i don't think so we can match that uh when i went to the ground i just saw the sea of yellow i when i went to wankhede yesterday and when i went to chepok on 8 this is different this is different and uh in mumbai when you see there is always blue color yeah. everyone is wearing blue color when any other team is playing but when it comes to uh, you know csk there were so many yellow color like sunflower there were sunflower <laughs> seeds there uh, you know the flowers were there uh, throughout the whole stadium and this kind of fandom is just because of dhoni uh, when you go to chepok it's only yellow no matter which team plays only yellow color and this is the kind of fandom you can't explain yeah. this is undescribable it's only yes you can you can only feel it You have to be there to feel it. You can't describe it words. Words will never be enough. If you go to the moon, I'm pretty sure there'll be some fans wearing yellow <laughs> and supporting CSK. I'm pretty sure. Okay, if that. if it was sunflowers at the chipper, what about the red roses that you saw on the second between RCB and LSG? Because well, the Red Army they also love their king, and uh, no matter how the results are turning out for RCB, yeah. that love is unconditional. Yeah, because you know he wear his heart on his sleeve. Right? He plays that kind of cricket. He's been outstanding for RCB. He's been outstanding for Indian cricket. He's a pride of India. So why wouldn't you love him? And uh, the best thing about him is, you know, he's 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 at age of mid thirties, but still he looks like such a young, charming cricketer, yeah. fit, and uh, you know he's still able to perform. If only other batters just give him a little bit more support, you will see, you know, him uh, performing even better. All right so we're talking about all these games but one of the great matches and it's a match that everybody marks on their calendar the other night Chennai Super Kings came visiting Mumbai Indians at the Wankhede it was an away game for them but like it fun mentioned it was a sea of mixed colors it was yellow and it was blue but we expected it to get loud little did we expect that it was going to break our own record on the shore meter because if i'm not wrong it was 130 decibels this time it got to 131 decibels i don't know how 131 decibels sound i mean it can make you deaf thanks to my watch it keeps telling me <laughs> loud environment it was on through and through is that is that the best sporting spectacle that you see because we've seen it in football when say madrid plays barcelona we've seen it in many other sports like federer taking on somebody like djokovic but these two teams year on year deliver this kind of a marquee match 
I think um, that's what people of India would want to see when they go to the stadium to watch the game. A lot is spoken about how the football stadium turns out and the noise and everything. But now I think IPL is not too far off. You've definitely seen last last night how people have celebrated two different captains. Mm. You know, MS Dhoni and Rohit Sharma both are very dear to their franchises. But um, the way the reception that they got on the field is amazing. All right, we are going to take a little turn now and we are going to look forward to the 18th of April, which happens to be the IPL's birthday. Now, Irfan, you played for so many years for the country, then you switched over successfully to being one of the wonderful broadcasters that we have. But little did we expect that summer months in India where everybody wants to stay home, it's going to only get hot, hotter, hotter <laughs> thanks to the Tata IPL. Yeah, it's been outstanding. We've been pretty blessed. I keep telling all my ex-cricketers as well that we are lucky to be born in India at the time where cricket is at its peak. And I, I don't think so that IPL has reached its peak. Indian cricket will even go further just because of IPL. A lot of people's uh, lives have changed. Our life, me and my brother, lives have changed. Yep. You look at Rinku Singh, the kind of story every year we hear. Yeah. Rin Rinku Singh is one of the outstanding story of IPL as well. That when he got into IPL, how he actually did well and how his life changed from sweeping the floor to actually now being, uh, you know, you know, loved by one of the biggest superstars in our country by Shah Rukh Khan. He loves him. Yeah, and no one would have thought like that. And then financially we get support. But at the same time, the whole country is in the funfair because uh, the whole uh, financial ecosystem goes to the boom, the hotels, the flights, the, transport the transportation systems. It's booming for those two, uh, two so months. And absolutely. And you, you talked about that he's getting hotter. I think it's getting cooler. Cooler <laughs> and cooler. Indian cricket is getting cool just because of IPL. Yeah, it's an oxymoron, but both of them make sense. But Ali, I just want to rewind to 18th April 2008. You're an active India cricketer. You'd already become captain of the Indian women's cricket team. It was a monumental moment, wasn't it? Because look, T20 didn't start here. I mean, it started in England. They played yep. the first T20 game, if I'm not wrong, in 2005. It was an international game. But we really brought it up, didn't we? <laughs> I mean, we have made the T20 format what it is, thanks to the IPL. Just glued to your television screens back in 2008. What was your first reaction when you saw, all right, so franchise cricket, okay, this is new. I, I remember playing the first T20 for India. It was much before this, right. 2008. So I was quite keen to see how this T20 format is being played by the men <laughs> and, the, and the league franchise. It right. was very new, relatively new concept. Yeah. But from the cricketers, perspective, I wanted to study the format and see how things go. So yes, I was quite curious, keen and I also felt that during the initial stages, there were a lot of women who were interested to watch the IPL as well because it was pretty new. I remember my mother who was never yeah, keen. I know Irfan was know, also yeah. playing the IPL. A lot of women <laughs> did want to watch the at that point of time. Your yeah. mother? Yeah, she was she was watching the matches. Her uh, she was pretty uh, keen to watch Chris Gale play. You know, there was a story on it, but uh, I would talk about it later. Some other day. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, I think I've pretty much eaten up all the questions here, but uh, not going to do that. Uh, from India today, it's good to see an old friend. Dia Kakar, please ask your question. Hi, thank you so much. So, uh, hi Irfan sir. Hi Mithali ma'am. Hi Dia. So, my question is to Mithali ma'am. Uh, you know, um, RCB's bowling weakness was exposed badly by the MI batters in their last encounter at 1K. You know, despite their batting finally stepping up collectively as a unit this time. So, from now on, what differently do, you know, RCB need to do as a unit? And do we see them making a comeback? And Irfan, sir, you were also talking about it initially. If you could also add something to this. I was wondering why someone has still not asked this question. Why hasn't an RCB question come in yet, Mithali? Yeah. Well, I think it's a daunting task for RCB to make it, uh, you know, in the top four. Definitely because... Uh, you know, they have lost a couple of games at home and uh, three away going games as well. Uh, everybody knows that batting is their strength. But uh, you can't really change much when it comes to bowling department because they they don't really have anybody sitting outside. I mean, what can you change? All you can expect is for them to come good. You know, Siraj, all of them to come good. That's what you can expect. And um, what they can do is probably shuffle the way they've been using the bowling resources a little bit and see if that works. 
Yeah, and it's rightly said by uh, Captain Batali, but uh, they are what I think as well. Their work starts in the auction. They yeah. need to have a better auction as far as the bowling is concerned. And now the they, mega auction is coming. Yeah, absolutely. They can't. They shouldn't have uh, let go Yuzi Chahal. They shouldn't have let go Hasranga. So they have let go so many good players in the past as well. KL Rahul used KL to Rahul, play for them yes. as well. So you know, if they think they have one or two players and they can win the trophy, and uh, you know, it's not going to happen. And if they think. That you know, RCB is a team which is loved by the fans, which is right. But is it enough for them? Uh, they need to actually just uh, look and they they want to think think about it really, really, uh, you know, sharply. Otherwise, it you know you'll get the same result. All right, Dia. I hope uh, you got your answer. But right on that corner, Aditya Maheshwari from Hindustan Times Digital. So fire away. Oh, my question is for both of you. Which Indian skipper has impressed you the most this season as we have seen some young guns taking over the charts? And who do you think has the potential to lead India in future as we know Rohit Sharma is a bit aging at the moment? So, which Indian <laughs> skipper has impressed you the most? <laughs> well, looking at the last last night's game, he's getting a hundred. I don't know if he's a bit aging. <laughs> so, yeah. who's impressed you the most from the... The newer lot of captains that you have seen in the IPL. Well, uh, in terms of captain, I think uh, it's too early to say that okay. because we've not really, uh, uh, you know, seen the, the teams have just played about five to six games. Um, I can say who's impressed me as a player. Okay. That is, of course, the form of uh, Ryan Parag. Okay. Oh, yeah. Definitely, he's he's very impressive. Only for a reason that the last few years have not been very great for mm. him. Yeah. Mm. But to overcome that and come and perform like that, show the faith that the franchise is shown in him to uh, perform like that. I think that is quite impressive. I don't know if I should probably say this, and I think he's going to beat me up. But <laughs> didn't you mention that you think if I mean Ryan Parag might just make it to the Indian side? Real quick, in maybe a year, year two's time. So, so yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It might happen even before that. I tweeted. So you're not going to beat me up. No, no, I'm not <laughs> going to beat you up. I'm, I said it, and yeah. it will happen. You know, not because you know that he's done well in this IPL. Yeah. He's been scoring runs in domestic cricket, and we have to value our domestic cricket. So, and a guy like him who scored tons of runs in domestic cricket and doesn't get picked, you know, it will be a highly disappointed thing because. You you want be players like that to come up, and he's young, he's exciting, and you know what? Right now he's batting at number four. Imagine if he bats at number five and six, and he's able to win the games. Yeah. Because when he was batting at five and six and seven, he was 17, 18, and 19, and a lot of people actually unnecessarily giving him flags. He's young. He's you know he's different. Let him be, man. He's a new age Indian cricketer, yeah. and that's why I always supported him. Uh, you know, even last year I was actually yeah. talking about highly. Because I see there is a talent, and uh, all credit to him how he has come up and how his Rajasthan Royals had backed him up as well. I said two years; it might happen earlier than that. Okay. Uh, next question: Who will it be? Tarun from Hindu, am I right? Are you here? This is Tarun Shah. Tarun from the Hindu. Tarun. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, Gautam Gambhir has made uh, a, an impact uh, coming back to Kolkata Knight Riders? And Tarun, who are you addressing this question to? Both of both of them. तो नहीं दो नहीं जवाब दे सकते हैं. Okay, Natali, has Gautam Gambhir had an impact on the fortunes of Kolkata Knight Riders? Just a fact. They've never had a start like this. They won three back-to-back games. Never been done by them. Well, um, I'm I'm sure because the the sort of attitude he gets uh, to the table that. You know that every every person, every player out there has to be has to do very well. And as a mentor, he gets a lot of experience. He's he's captained that side a yeah. couple of times, and they've won. So I, I'm sure that you know his um, suggestions and uh, the way to go around things definitely would have helped KKR along with the uh, you know uh, management. I mean, he's been part of yes. this family. <coughs> yes. And Irfan, correct me if I'm wrong. The man only talks about the game. Oh yes. There's oh, nothing yes. else that he talks about. Is that is that an effect on the KKR team and their fortunes? Surely it does. And that color suits him really well. That yeah. purple. You know, he's done really well as a captain. When he's actually whenever we wear his, you know, that jersey from 12 to 14, those two trophies under his belt as a leader. Uh, at the same time, there are a couple of things which has helped Gautam as well. 
चंद्रकांत पंडित एंड हिम यू नो द कैमरा ड्री एज डन रियली वेल बिकॉज बोथ आर सो स्ट्रॉन्ग कैरेक्टर गाइज यू नो यू मस्ट ए हर्ड लॉट ऑफ स्टोरीज अबाउट चंद्रकांत पंडित यू नो बींग वेरी अग्रेसिव कोच इन डोमेस्टिक क्रिकेट uh at the same time gautam has a good character but both of them coming together sitting sitting during the game regularly you know talking to each other that's a wonderful thing for kkr other thing they miss reyes reyes captaincy last year true you know he is he is a decent captain as well and him coming in there uh that certainly helps so those three players combined work really well for kkr right okay uh who do we have asking the next question abhishek upadhyay Sir, you can ask a question. Abhishek from Dainik Bhaskar. Hi, I'm 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 Abhishek from Dainik Bhaskar. Hi, everyone. Um, am I audible? Hi. Yes, you loud and clear. So my question is towards uh, Irfan Patan. I want to ask that which Indian debutant this year has impressed him the most? Sweet, simple, easy. Indian debutant. Hmm. Uh, look, there have been. Uh, if you give me option three or four, I can actually. Yeah, I'm actually. While you are answering, I'm yes, also I'm, wondering I'm, I'm, how I'm many thinking. debut times have we had? So yeah. who can who can we think? Uh, why are we doing this? Uh, Since you, you asked the question, give, give, me, give me. Give me. How about you five, give us options? Give me. Give me four five options. So we got. I know one. We just spoke about KKR. So yeah. there's Ankrish Raghuvanshi for sure. Yeah, Ankrish is there. Yes. Right. Ankrish. Who else? Mayank Yadav. Mayank Yadav. L- okay. Yes. First of all, two guys. Two guys have been really impressive. Uh, Mayank. Mayank has been so impressive uh, that we always get very happy and excited seeing a guy who can actually bowl 150. But what I really like about him is that he's been able to bowl 150, but uh, with the, at the same time there is a control. Yeah. And I like his alignment. Whenever I see in his action, his action is pretty much straight. His front knee is braced, uh, and he's. when he's actually having his follow through it's actually cutting down towards the batter and when that happens uh you will put a lot of less load on your body he's not fighting with his body obviously with the time he'll work uh, on bowling lot more and get fitter and he's an exciting prospect he's if he stays fit i think he's got the brightest future ahead i do have a question and you've been one of the most phenomenal fast bowlers that we've mm-hmm. seen but are then irfan pathan we had somebody like munaf patel we had varun aaron hmm. one thing that has plagued a lot of indian fast bowlers is hmm. injuries hmm. and more importantly you want hmm. everyone to manage those injuries well he's a young fast bowler we already seen him walk out hmm. because of a niggle or an injury we don't know what do the stakeholders of indian cricket need to do hmm. to make sure that the next crop of indian fast hmm. bowlers hmm. are less injury prone so what indian cricket has done now they have a fast bowling contract now right so when you have fast bowling contract you get a little bit of stability uh, obviously financially you call it but at the same time there is a nice uh, bridge which is actually uh, you know built between indian cricket and nca right. you know i've been part of the coaching uh, uh, you know courses as well so what they do whenever they identify uh, a particular fast bowler what they do they take them under their wings they are the nca and there are a lot of wonderful coaches there they work through them throughout the year hmm. and they look after their body they look after the you know bowling load as well uh, the injury part uh, you know there have been and I, I i always felt that you know sometimes nc nca gets unnecessary flack because they work so hard the coaches the physio the trainer but injuries are bound to happen we all have to understand if a guy is bowling 150 he's going to get injured so you can minimize that by actually work on your loading work on your alignment work on your fitness work on your recovery so many things can be worked on and this is what indian cricket and nca is working on at the moment uh, but you if you say that there will be no injury to a fast bowler who bowls uh, 150 it's not possible yeah. if you i'll guarantee you you sitting like that for 7 days your ba- you back will ache yeah it has to happen aap baithoge aapko dard hoga so banda jo itna load leke bhag raha hai bowling kar raha hai usko dard hona hi hai to humko minimize karna hoga hum kabhi bhi usko hamesha khatam nahi kar sakte yeah tough skill honestly all right next question coming in from devain uh, from times now so please go ahead and ask a question aur ye bhi bata dijiye ka kisse puchte hain i run uh, my question is to irfan irfan uh, you have already spoken uh, highly of shivam dubey as the best indian when it comes to spin hitting abilities 
so given his form right now can he really go on to jeopardize hardik pandya's chances in the upcoming t20 world cup even though uh, shivan dubey is not bowling like you said but hardik yeah. pandya also did not so uh, what do you think see eventually you know there will be a time where he will put pressure on hardik pandya you know if he start bowling uh, the kind of hitting ability where shivam dubey has it is next you know he's best to anyone you know he's been able to murder the spinner i haven't seen anyone uh, no one come close to him at the moment as far as the indian cricket is concerned who are playing current cricket and, and trying to play you you obviously you're going to negate mahendra singh dhoni because he has retired uh, but when it comes to batting in the middle over shivam dubey is the best and i'll be highly disappointed if he doesn't go to the world cup because that's the thing we have missed Uh, in T20 World Cups, in in yeah. you know, in so many World Cups, we have missed a guy like Yuvraj Singh, you know, who can hit six sixes, who can hit three four sixes, uh, you know, who can actually have a half century, sixteen seventeen balls. Shivam Dube is a kind of guy who plays fearlessly, fearlessly from the word go, and he can. I I saw him. I was doing the game, and he he came in first ball against left arm spinner, hit out of the park. Second ball, hit out out of the park. I haven't seen anything like that. Yes. Hardik's ability as a hitter has gone down, and that is why a lot of people yeah. are talking about Shivam Dubey as well. It might happen that both both uh, you know will take the flight uh, to the World Cup because you want to take experience as well. But I'm very excited about Shivam Dubey, what he can bring to the table. Right, and since we are talking about the Tata IPL, on the 20th of April we'll hit the halfway mark, and we would have seen quite a lot of cricket by then. Now Irfan has been there right from the very start where we spoke about predictions of who he thinks the top 4 contenders are going to be. Currently on the points table you got uh, teams like Rajasthan Royals and KKR who are at the top 2 spots. Then MI DC RCB they are there we have the trophy. MI DC and RCB they are at the lower end of the table. And then you got a mid table log jam of sorts with uh, teams like CSK then you got mumbai indians also <laughs> fighting gt yeah so i pretty much given i pretty much given you you know yeah they are stuck in a log jam because they've got eight points uh, yeah. kkr and csk have six and they've now managed to get to eight thanks to their victory over mumbai indians so a lot of oh. stuff is happening on that points table do you want to change your top four contenders now well we should be flexible isn't it as the tournament <laughs> goes keep changing your top four depending depending on the form and the right. points um I would say KKR. Okay. Hmm. First is KKR. Okay. RR. RR. Are we rhyming now? <laughs> okay. KKR. CSK. CSK. Uh, there's a toss-up between LSG and SRH. LSG and SRH. That's an say. interesting one. All right. Okay. Ifan, we've seen. I mean, we've seen a lot of teams in action. Hmm. Hmm. You've pretty much seen where the weaknesses lie. What hmm. are the strengths? Hmm. Who are your top four contenders now? And hmm. have you changed? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I thought RCB will do really well with their batting powers because you know there was a time where uh, you know their batting was only dependent on one or two person, but now they have a better batting lineup. But they're actually clearly disappointed. Uh, number one, RR, KKR, CSK. So three top three same. Mm-hmm. But on top four, even MI can qualify, even LSG can qualify, and Sunrisers Hyderabad. So these three teams. can actually will have a close fight to for the number 4 so look we are also celebrating fan week you just mentioned csk hmm. one of your contenders how are their neighbors rcb if they have to get to the playoffs hmm. how are you rating those chances because they've got one victory out of the six games they have played and five defeats virat kohli has shown rajat patidar has shown in bursts dinesh karthik got a great innings but they've got someone like lockie ferguson reese topley they've got some bowlers yes they lack a spinner how do you rate their playoff chances now are you writing them off mithali well 90% for sure <laughs> i'm writing them off is because see so far even the batting lineup virat has been scoring runs but there is nobody else who's stepping up to score runs yes dinesh karthik with the strike rate he's a finisher now when we come to the bowling department i think um you you do have options but again the later part of the tournament you need good spinners as well who's the top spinner yeah. maxwell is getting them wickets yes but he hasn't been scoring runs yeah. the bowling department is i mean 
there's nobody you can call like you know with this spell they are going to win a game for RCB. Right. Yeah, and the thing is, now n- next eight games, they need to win at least might, seven. Yeah. 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 You know, to get to sixteen points. That's the number. Yeah, yeah, seven wins or eight wins. Yeah, seven yeah. or eight wins. So that means they need to reach sixteen points to be fairly secure, and fourteen is depend on the run rate. So, uh, you know, it's 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 going to be very very tough for RCB. What they can do is they can actually have all Indian bowlers and all overseas uh, batters and all rounders. Can they do that? They they can do that. They, they can, can afford to. Yeah, what are the resources actually. they have? Yeah. And Mithali is right. They didn't go for the spinners. One point five. Uh, you know that was the price where Hasanga went for. They didn't go for him also. So now if they he was so shocked he didn't turn up to the Tata IPL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they didn't go for him. They they should have gone for him. Anyways, so now they have Indian bowlers who Yash Dayal, they have Akash Deep, they have Siraj, they have and uh, Karan Sharma and Dagar and Swapnil Singh sitting out as well as an all rounder. So they can play all Indian attack, play overseas batter and all rounder and see what happens. Well, the women's team won the title. and it gave a lot of hope to the bengaluru fans that maybe this is the year unfortunately it's not gone to plan right what about mi there was mi had picked up momentum they got those two wins back to back and surya kumar yadav also walked in yeah. unfortunately got a duck then got a 50 and things were looking like they're clicking and suddenly the csk game has yeah. again thrown a ton of questions at fun yeah yeah no matter what pitches where they play they need to chase Yes, they they missed out on uh, yeah. the chasing last game because it was a wonderful planning from CSK and they bowled really well. They had Pathirana, Mustafizur bowling into the pitch, but this batting lineup yeah. is an outstanding batting lineup. Yeah. Indian match winners, Rohit Sharma, Ishan Kishan. You know they have Surya Kumar Yadav. They have you know Tim David's powerhouse there as well. Yeah, uh, as well. You know Hardik Pandya if he comes back to the proper form. and you know that can have a big big impact as well they need to sort out their bowling they really need to sort out their bowling and they need to manage as a captain you know hardik needs to manage mumbai indians really well whatever matches they lost he had a big role to play you, even even yesterday uh, akash madwal didn't bowling the last over i was there in the commentary and i said you know if hardik pandya wants to give a statement he needs to bowl but You need to give a lot of responsibility to Akash Madhwal. That's his job. And if he's not going to bowl at the death, then how will he? I'll be able to have a confidence then. Uh, at the same time, Shreyas Gopal, when he got the wicket of a left-hander, Rachin Ravindra, who was set, why didn't you give him the next over? He only bowled one over, especially on the kind of pitch which was little. There was a little grip in it, and that's why, despite the dew being there, CSK was able to defend the total. Despite the ball was wet, because there was some slowness on the pitch, so you need to adapt it very quickly. And unfortunately, Hardik Pandya is not able to adapt so far. I really hope for Mumbai Indians' sake that he is able to adapt and do better what he has done so far. Yeah, the Tata IPL. I mean, it just has all these surprises in store. But uh, no surprise. Who's asking the next question? Nishad from ETV. Please ask your question, sir. So my question is for both for both of them. Uh, my captain. My question is regarding Pandya's captaincy. So I wanted to ask when he was working with Ashish Nehra uh, in Gujarat Titans under his leadership they performed so well and during his reign uh, Nehra was constantly giving instructions you know from the boundary lines uh, to his bowlers and all so do you think that factor is lacking in MI and that is affecting his captaincy and one more thing I wanted to ask is uh, right now he is bowling Bumrah one over in the power play and the other three in, three in the death over. So do you think uh, he should split it in two in power play and two in death? That would be a better option for MI. Now, this question has been asked many a times <laughs> before, and what's interesting is in all these seasons of the Tata IPL, never has a topic off the field <laughs> dominated the headlines so much. <laughs> uh, You've spoken about it mm. lots of times on broadcast, on commentary, mm. but the Ashish Nehra effect mm. does it show? You, you know when when you talking about Ashish Nehra's uh, effect, yes, it was there. It was visible. It is helping Shubman Gill quite a quite a bit as well. But at the same time, do you think uh, Mumbai Indians suppose staff is not helping Hardik Pandya? They are helping. They are they are there on the boundary line. They're trying to help. Mark Bachar is there. Kiran Pollard is always there. They're trying to help. It's up to Hardik Pandya yeah. to actually make sure to have a plan, plan B, plan C if something is not working. Be aware of the situation. Be aware of the condition. He's not a newbie. He's been actually playing cricket for so many years now. He's played for Mumbai Indians. He's playing for IPL for so many years since 2015. He's played. He represented in India for so many years now. 
So he has to use his own experience, especially on the field. If he's not going to use his own experience and be smart about it, he's going to find out. And this is what is happening right now. All right. Uh, we have a couple of more questions coming in. Uh, who do we have next? Have I missed out on anyone? Akash, News 18, are you here? Okay. So Hi, brother. my question is for both of, both of the experts here. Uh, we have been talking about the World Cup selection right from the beginning of this season and we have been speaking of with different players every week. I just wanted to know about uh, Yuzvendra Chahal who has been on the receiving end in the last uh, couple of editions of the T20 World Cup. How do you guys see him this time around? And just to correct mm -hmm. Akash, we've not been start. I mean, we've not been talking about this from the start of the season. I think we've been talking about it for <laughs> ages now. The T20 World Cup. What do we do? What about Yuzi Chahal? But he's been in great form. To be very honest, if you're going to pick players on form, he should be the player, the bowler to be picked. But again, how the captain, the captain's comfort, the the captain's confidence in players have to be is also something that one should consider yeah. and uh, the management how they want to you know uh, the composition of the team how they want to look at it but having said that yes yeah, someone who's been performing over the years yeah. uh, it's clearly from his perspective it's quite disappointing if he doesn't get picked for Strange, the world cup he's not played a world cup game for <laughs> india yeah. yet but uh, also remember that the ICC needs the list of players from every country by the end of April. So, it's going to be a very interesting few weeks, right? Uh, Irfan, you also want to answer that. He asked both of you. Yuzi Chahal, yeah, you've look, been a huge fan of him. Yeah, obviously. And in the last World Cup in Australia, I kept saying that even in the final, when all the commentators were there, from England, there was Nasser Hussain, Atherton, Ravish Shastri, and I said, get Chahal and get, get to the final. I said that before the show. And, the India you know, England semi final. Yeah, India England semi final. But he was not there in the in the playing eleven. What I want from Team India is to have proper bowling unit. A wrist spinner is a must in playing eleven. When you go to the World Cup, a wrist spinner has to be there. So Kuldeep Yadav is in great form. Uh, you'll have Jadeja or left arm spinning all rounder because you need two spinners. So might happen that Yuzi might miss out. You don't know. Because you want to think, are you going to take four fast bowlers? Are you going to take three spinners? But you know, you know, if a guy like Chahal or skill of that wrist spinner is not there in the Indian team, you know, we're going to have a similar result what we had before. Okay. Uh, next question. Who do we go to? Um, Kaushik. India.com. Hi. Uh, this is Kaushik from India.com. My question is for Irfan Bhai. Uh, Irfan Bhai, yeah, uh, just uh, just 15 days left uh, for the T20 World Cup selection. I mean, I mean, all the teams have to submit their names. What do you think the Indian bowling uh, attack should be at the T20 World Cup? Uh, look, they'll be very interesting uh, as far as the World Cup fast bowling is concerned. But I want the selectors to keep in mind to have a best bowling lineup, informed bowling lineup. Uh, you'll have Bumrah. You'll have pr probably a left arm spinner in Jadeja or Akshar Patel who is performing really well. Uh, mostly Jadeja's experience and his feeling you want to take. Uh, at the same time, a good wrist spinner who can actually be wicket taker in the in the middle overs. Uh, that is a must. Do you take I want Yuzi both? I, I, look, ideally you want, you want yeah. both of them. But then you might be missing out on one wicket keeper. Or missing out on one fast bowler. Yeah. So what you want to do? How you want to get the balance? Uh, and nowadays, you know, selectors and team managers, what they do, they take extra players with them as well because it's going to be far away from India. So you want to take those extra players who you think, uh, you know, they're in the mind as far as the injury replacement is concerned. So, you know, talk will be around that. But I want one important thing from Indian cricket is get a gun left armor who's in form. Take him. Even if it's young, that's fine. Take, yeah. take a left armor which we miss for so many years now, especially in a big occasion. And if Arshdeep Singh can keep bowling the way he's bowling, you know, he's bowling really well with the new ball and bowling uh, at the death as well. But keep an eye uh, on someone like Mohsin Khan as well. If he stays fit, you know, he's got that extra bounce. He gives you something extra. extra. We saw what he did on Kolkata pitch, which was flat. He actually troubled, uh, you know, quite a, quite a big batter as well. He troubled in form Sunil Narayan with his variation uh, and the bounce. So, who knows? So, but get the bowling sorted properly. Take the guys who are in form and in top fitness. All right, uh, we have time to squeeze one more question. So, from NDTV, Abhishek yeah. Paul. There. Hello. Yes. One final question, and it's you. Yeah. Man. So, uh, one final question, and uh, it's, it's regarding Virat Kohli. Uh, 
a few hours from now he'll be playing uh, in the IPL match. So, uh, two years back, Gautam Gambhir said a very interesting thing about Virat Kohli that strike rates are overrated. You know, with all the stocks going, to, uh, he is in great form, but with all the stocks going around his strike rate, uh, do you think it's justified? Uh, uh, justified uh, going into the 20 World Cup since if if he's uh, picked uh, in the squad, he'll bat at number three for him. Vitali, you've been quiet for quite some time now <laughs> and uh, I'm going to save Irfan because he's very good friends with Gautam. He gets to meet Virat Kohli quite often so... No, I'll say, I'll call it spade to spade. I, I, I don't mind. So, we'll come to you. You'll have the final word on this. Yeah. But batter, what do we do? Well, I think uh, he's definitely among runs. We should pick him because for a fact that uh, when you're talking about experience getting into the World Cup, he's also someone who's done very well in the last T20 World Cup. But again, which order he goes, what is the requirement of the team, that is something the management and the captain has to look at. Uh, if he is scoring runs at this strike rate as an opener, then you know it's, it's an option whether to bat him at number 3 or as an opener. You of course have Shubman Gill, again they are pretty much, uh, on the approach is similar. So it's, it's up to the management but I feel that if we are having the same yardstick of picking people on in form, then we should also go with them. Virat Kohli's strike rate is actually slightly better than Chris Gale <laughs> in international T20s. 137 point, you know, 138, close to 138. Hardik Pandya's strike rate is 139. Rohit Sharma's strike rate is 139. We don't talk about their strike rate, we we'll be talking about what's Virat. The, so, it's, what's it's, the new benchmark of strike rates? Such a, How much do you need to say, so okay. You need to make it strike rate plus average. Uh, and combined. You need, yeah, you and you need to see the kind of role the particular player is playing. You can't have same yardstick for each Everyone. and every player. You can't have a similar strike rate. You think if a guy having a 137 strike rate at batting at number 6 and 7, will he be happy? You won't bet a strike rate. Okay. But if a guy who has a f nearly 50 average plus 137 strike rate, why would you even want to talk about him being in the side or not? Wow, like feels like a maths class. <laughs> thank you so much, Professor, for giving me that theorem and to all the fans. And I also want to thank our friends here, members of the media, who've got some pretty interesting, riveting questions. And I hope that you have got all the answers from our esteemed uh, panel here of Irfan Pathan and Mithali Raj. But we saw what happened in the rivalry week. Thale Dhoni hit it out of the park. Bang, bang. Rohit Sharma got 100. Virat Kohli. I mean, his team might not be doing well, but he has hit like a purple patch. He's got a lot of runs from the bat. The orange cap rests firmly on his head. But if that was rivalry week, I can't wait how fan week is going to turn out to be. Because you, the fans, have made the Tata IPL what it is. And... Well, there is a fan in each one of us, isn't there? So enjoy the Tata IPL action on Star and make sure that we break and thump all the numbers and all those records that we've seen in the past. I want to thank Irfan and Mithali once again. This is the Star Sports Press Room. We'll meet you, same place, same channel, same time. Until then, it's bye-bye. <laughs>